Hello, I am Martin Fenska and welcome to the first episode of Let's Try Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden Demo. I would describe Mutant Year Zero as a story-driven RPG with a turn-based combat system similar to, for example, XCOM, except uh, we will have a duck in our team and the boar and later a mutant chick with a horn. So in certain areas, the game doesn't take it itself that seriously which is actually a good thing because this team composition often creates like a pretty hilarious situations and uh, comments from our main heroes but uh, the game also maintains a decent depth of the like the strategic element so it still provides a good challenge if your main focus is like on the combat um with that said, I think this is enough for like the game description and we can jump right in. The game will uh, partially describe itself as we play it. So let's see what the options are when it comes to settings. Uh, three difficulty settings, easy, normal, hard, uh, easy, mm, everything does less damage and uh, we basically uh, regenerate everything after every combat. So it's pretty easy overall uh, as long as you can handle each combat separately there is nothing that can stop you normal uh, we regenerate less health after combat and skills don't reset their cooldown the way how this works is um, every skill needs a certain amount of uh, kills to reset so for example you can get run and gun uh, that you use and after you use it, you need to kill two enemies to reset it so that you, you can use it again. So in normal difficulty, uh, when the combat ends, this cooldown, the amount of kills that you need, doesn't reset. That's the uh, difference between easy and normal and then hard. Uh, you don't regenerate health, uh, cooldowns don't reset, enemies do more damage. But overall, hard doesn't seem to be that difficult. I've played the game a little bit already just to figure out how everything works, uh, how the controls work, some of the basic mechanics. And uh, I didn't have too many problems on hard one, once I figured out the basics. So that's, we're gonna, that's what we're gonna uh, use for this uh, series. But I'm not gonna turn on permadeath. I want to have the option to save wherever I want. I still don't have that that much experience with the game so I just don't want to run into uh, some situations that I can't solve just because I don't know enough about the game and I want to be able to reload in case that happens. Okay now we can start the game and I actually don't remember anymore if there is like an intro video or something. Another day, another mission, risking our necks for the Ark. You know, I ask myself, Dux, why are you out here? And you know why. The Ark's water pump is broken again, and Hammond said he needs more scrap to fix it. Yeah, well, we'd do it a lot better if he'd sent us somewhere with actual scrap to find. Why do you have to be so annoying? Come on. We gotta head back before prep closes for the night. Okay, so here we are. The game has like two parts. One is when you are outside of combat, when it's real time and you can freely move around with your characters. And then the second part is combat, of course, when the turn, when the game turns into turn-based game. And when you get rid of all the enemies, you switch back to real time. Uh, when it comes like to the to the way the world works. It's divided into sub RLs. Uh, we can check the world map and there are these zones always that are connected by like roads, but you don't move between zones like that you have to walk from one zone to the other. Uh, you always clear a whole zone then find an exit from a zone and when you activate it you get automatically or uh, the next zone loads up and again you you clear the zone and move to another one uh, we'll get uh, to that in a second i think this is uh, all that we need to know right now maybe one thing our goal right now is to get to the arc which is here and we'll find out what arc exactly is along the way and also once we get there 
So right now we are at the zone called called the Metal Bird, and we want to have a look around on this. Or, on, or in the, each of these maps, we can collect uh, scrap uh, weapon parts and uh, some like artifacts that we can then uh, transform, or that we can either use as a cor currency, or we can use these uh, pieces of weapons to up for upgrades in the base, and uh, well, some other things that uh, we can talk about later. Trust me, I'm because there is no point Shut like talking up. about it without you guys Once knowing what uh, exactly so uh, I am talking about What's how these things look like. We're in the zone. Keep your eyes open and mouth shut. Yeah, you only told me that nine thousand times already, Borman. Okay, here I would really like to have some additions to the game. It's still a demo version, so the game will be released in like two weeks. Mm, and for these small maps, I'd like to have a minimap because even though I can hit Q to get like uh, at least a di direction indicator, uh, it's usually a good idea to like search the whole maps to find all the uh, all the loot that you can get from the zone. And well, this doesn't really help with that, so I would like to see the option, or I would like to see on the minimap uh, where I still have to go Look and where this. I can find stuff. Beautiful. Here we, can some, beautiful. we have some scrap. This scrap's gonna make us heroes back at the Ark. So this is one of the things we are looking for, now we just pick it up, scrap times eight. And as I said, that works kind of like currency, we can see in the top corner and that we have 54 scrap one med kit and then we have zero artifact points and the other one i think that's weapon parts so those are like the main things yes, that we can find mutants. not just any mutants stalkers tight muscles good meat i smell them too where there's stalkers there's arc where there's arc there's killing time for skizzix and treble oh, they're close 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 over there come brother I'm on that trail. Okay, so we have our first combat ahead. And uh, oh, 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 oh. let's turn off our flashlights that will switch to like um, sneak mode. And hopefully we'll be able to set up an ambush for these two ghouls. If I can find the second one somewhere. There he is. Okay, fine. Let's... Uh, Alright, come on, follow me. I want to switch to ducks and hide behind the tree. Tactical combat. Yeah, next. If you want to read uh, these, uh, just pause the video if you need. But there is nothing like really important. Okay, so now we started the combat, and because we surprised them, we have the first move. Uh, so let's uh, fire the weapon. We have 75% chance to hit, 20% chance to crit. Let's hope that we hit, and we can see that all four hit points are like uh, flashing, so that means if we hit, this will be a kill. Uh, also, we are using crossbow, which is a silent weapon, so if we get a kill here, the other ghoul shouldn't notice this. There we go. So, leave it for damage, he went down. And we are back in the real-time mode, because the other enemy didn't notice. Indeed, if I used, like, a gun, or shotgun, then... Get over here. The other Marauder would hear us. And he would join the fight. So often, uh, before you enter combat, it's good to just, like, move around the enemy camps and pick out all these, like, guards they have around. Uh, let's actually split up here. and try to sneak behind the tree. If we can do that. I'm not sure, because we are almost in the zone of control. I'm thinking maybe if I crawl around and try to surprise him from behind this tree if that works it might be better uh, 
Can I hide? Come on. There we go. Now we are hidden. And we will just move a little bit closer. Just in case we don't get the uh, stealth kill. Ambush. Of course, the first few zones are more like a tutorial, so there is no challenge in these fights at all. But still, if you could do this without taking any damage, it would be nice so that we save uh, med packs for later. Yeah, we want to activate dogs. And let's see, 75% again, so let's fire the weapon, hopefully be hit again. There we go. So first two enemies are I'm down without dealing, any problems. Dealing, stalking machine, baby. Never seen ghouls this far south before. We're getting closer to the Ark every day. Something's up, Borman. Okay, and this is other type of items that we can get sometimes. These are definitely a lot more rare than uh, scrap or uh, like weapon parts. This is a module for a weapon that can be um, installed on a weapon once we get to the Ark. One additional critical damage, so when we crit it hits for one more and 50% chance to burn enemies when we hit. Okay, let's regroup. regroup. Now we can turn on our flashlights. With flashlights on, we can move around much faster. And let's see. That's a. That's a. We saw one of these things once, filled with zone dogs, right? Oof. The ancients sure knew how to build big pieces of garbage. Okay, let's. Have a look around the plane. There should be some loot, I hope. There we go. Oh, scrap. And there is some more loot on this side as well. Yeah, this is why I would like to have the minimal. Let's check the map here. There's only one way out. But I would really like to have the option to check where I still have to go on the map. And oh, there's another we got mutant some camp. Goons. One of them looks like he ate a ghoul. We better get into ninja mode. Listen, turn off your flashlight. If we sneak by the water, they won't see us. Okay, so here we have some enemies that are way too high level for us. And we have to avoid them. But I think I missed still part of the map on this side and here the game is trying to teach us how to use uh, the sneak mode but we already know how that works there we go i knew that i missed something okay now we should be going back to the plane okay fine so hopefully now we have everything and we can just move around here, turn off the light. And as you can see, they are level 55, so we definitely don't want to get anywhere near these guys. Trace is too ugly to beat. No one loves a stalker. Give me the stalkers. Let them come. Where are you? Ark don't even love stalkers. <laughs> I'm just checking around, uh, trying to get as much loot as possible. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it's possible to somehow get the loot that's behind them. At this level, if you can just somehow sneak behind and steal the loot before they can catch you. But we're definitely not gonna try it here. Let's just turn on the flashlight and we'll move to the next zone. So, here we go, we found the exit, now we just enter. And the game will move us to the next zone automatically. The arc's mm. up ahead. Home, sweet home. Oh, I'm gonna kiss that elevator when I see it. Get upstairs, take a bath, get a grog with the boys. Get another grog with the boys. Foot massage. Ah, oh, it's gonna be great. And again, I'm trying to, like, not miss any loot on the map, and it's so annoying when you don't have the minimap available. Okay, 
Okay, I think there is some more loot here. A campsite. Looks like a family lived here. Lived here and died here. Nothing like a bunch of skeletons to put your mind at ease. Okay, let's loot everything that we can. There are some med kits. Yep. So when we use med kits in combat, it heals, I think, four hit points. And when we use them out of combat, it always heals us to full. Though you always, if possible, want to wait for the combat to end and then use med kits. Um, okay, we have been here, I think. Let's see if there is something on the shore. That's the camp. Okay. So that's this side of the map clear. And if I remember correctly, there should be a combat in the other half. There's yep. a cabin up ahead. Definitely feel a ghoul vibe coming off of it. So we run in, guns blazing? Too dangerous. If we're sneaky, we can get into a good position. A good position keeps us alive. Turn off your flashlight. Okay. First, let's check around here if there's maybe some scrap. Nope. Oh, there is scrap. There we go. Seems pretty important to not miss any scrap at all. Hungry. Because hungry. I guess we take the arc. Taste the mutants. <laughs> Love me some mutants. <laughs> there we go. Rip their hearts. Crush their hey, hey. You hear that you hear that noise? I hear my stomach. Hungry. Kill! Okay, so what I wanted to say before, um, that it's important not to miss any scrap, because uh, every heap gives like, I don't know, four, six scrap maybe, but when you want to buy items, they seem to be pretty expensive, like 150-ish, from what I can say, for a new weapon, for example. Uh, so you really can't afford it to just rush through all these maps and only go for like the main objective. That's why I'm trying to like, check every uh, corner of the map. I already know this combat. There is one more enemy here. We can see him walking there in the distance. So let's split it up again. And we will move ducks behind this tree. Hide. Uh, turn off the flashlight. And maybe we can even hide if I can make it there we go okay switch start combat and we should be able to take out the butcher without uh, the remaining two knowing about it we again we are using silent weapon there we go it serves you right mm, okay a level up. Oh, let's uh, check the inventory, or maybe. Yeah, let's check the character screen first. When we get some uh, gear upgrades, we will check the inventory. So every time we level up, we get certain amount of points available that we can invest into mutations. Uh, here we can only see the cost of the mutations. The mutations are divided into minor and major. And then we have stat mutations. Uh, these uh, like abilities are different for every hero. So Bormin has different abilities than, uh, uh, than Dax. In this case, we probably want to wait for a run and gun. That is 
pretty powerful early uh, and not just early like the, the whole time it's one of the uh, more important skills so we have only one point which means the mutation will have to wait as for ducks when we switch uh, we also have only one point so far and I think the first ability I want to unlock here is the knee shot because that can disable enemies uh, actually, I'll switch to the character, not the character scheme, to inventory, because here we can see that we have mutation slots, and um, this means we can only have one mutation of each type available uh, at a time. So it's not like um, we are unlocking more and more abilities and have more and more options available uh, like at one time. We always have to decide what do we want to go with. And you can, of course, change this between combat, but you can't use all the abilities that you have unlocked in combat. You only have uh, one ability of each type available in every combat. Um, but, well, as I said, for now, we really don't want to unlock anything. We want to wait for more points. So let's get out of here. And we want to reposition a little bit. Uh, let's move here hide and then we move come on then we move ducks pick up some scrap along the way and we'll try to use this climb up hide and let's see if we can uh, get a kill from here. If we could kill the Marauder, and then it would be just 2v1 in our favor. Uh, start the ambush. Activate. And it is 100% shot. So let's fire the weapon. Of course, now this was in vision range of the other guy. So uh, here... Uh, he knows about us. The question is, he has 246 hit points. I probably just want to wait. I'm hoping he's gonna hide in the hut and then I'll surprise him. Or what I could do... No, I don't want to get too close to him. Let's just uh, wait, see what he does. Okay, so he is doing what we wanted him to do. He missed. Great. Now we can activate Bormin. 25% shot. Uh, okay, fine. That's not good enough. Let's just try to find a better angle for this. This would be 100% shot. There we go. Fire the weapon. But that's not enough to get a kill. And I'm not sure what I can do to get the kill here. I could maybe just use Overwatch in case he runs out of that hut. But I'm afraid he'll just run to, uh, to Bormin and hit him. Well, first of all, we need to reload, or we have to switch weapons. We don't need the silent weapon anymore, so we might as well switch. Then, how far can we go? No chance to hit. What the hell? Why can't I go anywhere? I'm a bit confused now. There we go, this is what I wanted. Okay. Um, let's hide behind the tree. Yeah. 
And now we use Overwatch. Oh, wait, can I hit him? No. He has full cover. That's why it doesn't work. Overwatch. Overwatch. Let's see what he's gonna do. Come on, hit him. There we go. So it worked. He went after Borman, but thanks to that Overwatch, he managed to stop him. Great. So we have another level up. Let's see if now we have enough points to get at least something. I think this is enough for run and gun. Let's develop this mutation. Yes. Good. And when we switch to the inventory, you can see that now we have run and gun active and that we don't have any more options available to switch to, but this is how we would switch later to other mutations. Okay, let's stick up. Back here. And I think we'll just finish this map quickly. Let's turn on this flashlight. Uh, loot everything. Strange talking box that hisses at you like a snake when powered on. Sometimes, depending on where it is placed, it will speak to you with beeps, whistles, or even faint voices. It includes a handy slot on the front for keeping things in. Oh, sometimes we find these artifacts that give us artifact points uh, that we can later use in the arc for certain upgrades. We don't keep the item as a thing in an inventory. It gets transformed into this point. It confused me a little bit when I played uh, that test run. I was trying to find uh, the boombox in my inventory that I'm going to sell it. But it's not there, it's just transformed into one artifact point. Look at this beauty. The ancients left a lot of ugly junk behind, but once in a while you see something like this. Wonder what these buttons are for. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I'm not kidding around. Lay off the buttons. What's up your butt? That's a bomb, all right. They used to call it a boom box. Touch that red button, and it goes boom. Don't be pretending you know what any of this crap is. We'll bring it back to the Ark and show it to Prip. Ask him what it's worth on the black market. Okay. Uh, here we managed to find a hand grenade that probably should equip right away. So far we have a smoke grenade equipped. And if I switch to Borman, he has a normal grenade. So here we have a second slot for items and I'll equip a normal grenade there. And there's one more thing. I think I pick up, picked up all the scrap and weapon parts, but we also have a chest here that we can open. And in chest, we get the, often the most interesting items. Here, a new weapon, Gaper. Can destroy covers, knocks enemies back. Uh, this guy's powered cannon, humorously named after the type of damage it has been knowing to deliver, launches fat, chunky shells. What the gaper loses in subtlety, it gains back in power. Can knock back most enemies. This is pretty good because if they are in cover, you can knock them away from the cover. Uh, so you flank them with this weapon, knock them out of cover, and then other people who otherwise wouldn't be able to hit the enemy can hit him. We definitely want to equip the weapon, take the item, and let's give it to... Uh, we want to have... We, or we want ducks to be our stealth killer, so... Uh, Bormin is gonna be the brute force, and instead of the stinger... Actually, maybe instead of the scattergun. The scattergun is not that good. We can even compare items. You can see uh, 3, 8, 15, 3 ammo, 10 range in the description, and compare... Uh, we gain extra flat damage, that's that green 4. Uh, the crit damage goes down by 2, crit chance goes down by 2. Also the ammo the weapon uh, has available goes down. Range is the same, but uh, the ability to knock enemies back is a lot more important. And with crit chance only 15%, the crit damage is not that relevant. We'll be doing normal non-crit hits a lot more often, so I'm more interested in that 4 damage rather than 8 crit damage. So let's switch the weapon. Later we can just focus uh, some of the... The available bi available builds on uh, critical hits. 
then of course the crit damage is a lot more important but for that we need quite a few um extra level ups so for now the gaper is better i would say good uh did we miss anything i hope not um let's see is there anything on this side i don't think we checked this corner no, nothing here. Uh, let's just try to find the exit, and I think there we will make a cut, or maybe enter the next zone, and then we'll make a cut in this episode. So there was some more scrap. And there is... is it more here even? Yeah. Weapon parts. And this should be the exit. Come on. Uh, you know what, let's just make a cut here and we'll enter the next zone in the next episode. I think we covered all the basics today, so from the next episode we just uh, can focus on the uh, gameplay only. I don't think that I missed too many mechanics. The only thing that we need to cover is uh, the arc and we'll get there next time. Let's see, we still have to cover one more zone, so that will be the goal for the next episode. Clear the zone and then enter the arc. But as I said, that's going to be the next episode. So I hope that you guys like this game, that you like this episode. You're going to join me for the next one again. And until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.